Here I am at the Ferry Village. Not been here yet today. Yeah, first time today. Oh, I figure, have a walk. Hi. I've actually had two kips today now, because when I got back earlier, had something to eat, and just like, head again, just fucked tires. Okay. No worries. Deal with it. That's fine. Well, I have been training again. You know, the first time for a while I've been training. Of course, that takes it out of you a bit. Uh, I had that time where I only had two hours sleep during the trip, so therefore that makes a difference. I lost five kilograms in weight, so therefore that makes a difference. So it's like, okay. If the body's telling me something, telling me it needs to rest for a few minutes, that's cool. Do that. No worries. I'm not going to get back into, well, hopefully, won't get back into the routine of sleeping for sort of three times a day, but for an hour each time. And, you know, yeah, yeah. No, don't want that. That's not good. If today that has to be the case, then today it has to be the case, and then, yeah, that's okay. If the body needs rest, let the body rest. That's fine. Well, I'm just doing the video, now it's going on to YouTube, the one I did at the uh, Spiny Palace, so that's cool. Uh, good video, I liked it. Well, God told me to use that as an analogy. There's buildings there. He said that's a perfect analogy of what's going on. Not just with me, but with other people as well. So it's like, cool. Cool, cool, cool. In the car, just thinking about things. Um, that song against all odds is playing for a song. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Good song. That takes you back a bit. But then God started, I thought God was talking to me about um, the real horror. Is that we think that when we're going through stuff, that's a horror. God says, no. A lot of people think that when they get old, that's a horror. No. When you get old and you don't, don't gain wisdom. You don't gain understanding. You're, you're older, but you're still a kid. Not as in your nature. Not as in playful, but as in immature. That's a horror. That's a horrible situation to be in. There's a lot of people in that situation. There are. Who just haven't grown up, haven't developed. You know, haven't you know, taken those steps forward in knowledge and understanding and gaining wisdom. And that's terrible. I mean, we, we put it this way, we're all, to a certain degree, that. We are. I said in the last one, I did the song years ago. Shape me, break me, make me. But for the last 20 years, I should have been going through that in a massive way. I should now be in a position of being absolutely perfected. But I'm not. Is that down to God? If anything, it's down to me. Now, it's quite possible I shouldn't be going through that for 20 years. Maybe that should be starting now. Maybe. But the fact I did the song then is that I... Yeah. 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 So, we all, to a certain degree, have a degree of immaturity that we need to face. Yeah, certainly puts right as a Christian, God, yeah, yeah. As a Christian, something that's obvious is you know, the Matthew 22, 36, 38, obvious. When I saw it Saturday, it just, it just absolutely exploded my mind and my heart and everything, just everything went, yeah, wow. That's it, there you go, <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. Okay. It just made sense. Completely made sense. Ugh. Ah, dear. Yeah. I say, it's, should I have known it before? Should we all have known that, really? Yeah. Yeah. Should we all have known the things years ago that we either have just learned or we still haven't learned yet? Yeah. Yeah, but we'll put it this way, it would have been fantastic had we have known it, because then we could be further forward than we are now. But we just have to work now with what we've got. That's the reality. That is the reality, folks. 
It's no good looking back and saying I've wasted 20 years and beating yourself up about that. Yeah, look at it, understand it, learn from it. Put it where it belongs in the past. There you go. That's gone. Now we're here, we have to deal with now. What's the now? What's here right now? Let's deal with that. Yeah, so all these, you know, people ministering in the church, I'm not interested in all this stupidity of, oh, and I've said it myself on videos, oh, they've been in the way, as in in the way for 20 years. Don't care. It doesn't matter really, no. It doesn't matter at all. What matters is, how do we move forward? Yeah, how do we go from where we are now to where we need to be? Yeah, the past, I don't care. That's, that's, yeah, that's between you and God. It's got nothing to do with how we fix the problem. Yeah? How we fix the problem of church moving forward? How we fix the problem of we go from man's way, which is always the way of they're doing it in the, their ministry, have it prepared in advance, have it on the... Um, laptop or whatever and making sure it's a nice smooth smooth excuse me god we're dealing with yeah things aren't exactly smooth with god yeah they shouldn't be they should be real there should be tr honesty and truthfulness and it should be god leading whoever god chooses to lead whatever that means that's what it has to be. But how do we go from what we've got to that? That's the thing. That's wisdom. All the stuff in the past, that's gone. Leave it. Leave it where it is. Even the problems you've had with people in the past, leave it. You can't change that. How do we move from here to where we need to be? If you're a couple and you've had problems in the past, cool, okay. Learn from it. Then how do you move from here to where you need to be? That's all that matters. All that stuff, that stuff is who you were, it's not who you are. Let's start off from now who you are. Do that every day. Every day. Don't remember the, the things from yesterday. See, that's the reason. The reason why you need to forgive people is because you shouldn't be remembering the stuff from yesterday. Because that stuff is just going to drag you down. You can't move forward if you're continually looking back. You can't. In a relationship, in a friendship, in whatever. Um, in your relationship with God. In your own walk. If you're continually looking back at your walk and your own failings, you can't move forward. Because if I'm doing this, eventually I'm going to go whacking into that tree there, aren't I? I'm going to f fall over that bit there. That's going to keep happening. So what, 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 what's going to happen? Eventually I'm just going to stand still because I can't go that way. If I'm going that way, I'm actually going backwards, right? I'm going to where I was a minute ago. That's no good. I've got to turn around and look in a direction that I should be going. That means that is the past. Leave it. Learn from it, move on. As I said before, if someone has sinned against you, you forgiving them doesn't mean that they're forgiven by God. They still have to deal with that between them and God. Their sins against you, they're still sins, they're going to deal with God. But what's between you and them you can't forgive them for their sins. You can only forgive them for, their, for what they did against you. But not the sin part. You can't forgive that. Only God can do that. But you forgive them for their attitude and for the fact they did those things against you. That's what you're forgiving them for. Yeah, if someone's borrowed money and not paid, them, paid you back, you're forgiving them for that. You're forgiving the debt. Why? Because the Lord forgave you that massive debt that you owe him. Right? Simple as that. Now, that doesn't mean you keep lending to that person. Because you know that person's unlikely to pay you back, so don't lend. That's wisdom. 
It doesn't mean you demand that a person pays you back. You forgive that because the Lord forgave you. That doesn't mean you're going to be best friends with these people. It doesn't mean that you're going to keep lending to people that don't pay back or you're going to keep trusting people that are liars. You learn, you be wise in your dealings, but you forgive the things that people have done against you. Not because it's hurting them, but because it's hurting you. Because you can't move forwards. Other people get other views of why you've got to forgive people, but simply that's, that's from my understanding, that's the thing. You have to move forward. You can't move forward if you're continually looking back. Simple. Not just at yours, but other people's stuff. If you're looking back, you're still looking back. Now, as I say, yeah, look, if you know that someone shouldn't be trusted and you've, you've got issues with them in the past because of that, forgive the issues in the past, but then settle it in your mind that you cannot trust that person. That person now has to earn trust. But they have to do double what anyone else would have to do to earn trust now because they've lost your trust. That's fine, you don't have to trust people, you trust God. Right? You don't have to trust someone to pay you back. You trust God. You never trust people. You trust God. You trust people that have earned it, of course. There are people that are trustworthy. But those people that aren't, you don't, you don't be stupid. You don't go lending to people that aren't going to pay back and then moan at God. Oh, I've got to forgive them again, have I? You were the one who kept on lending to someone who you know is never going to pay you back. That's not wisdom, is it? Really? Wisdom is knowing. Their problem doesn't have to be your problem. If you don't forgive them, then you're making their problem your problem. Right? I say it about, about the worst things. You've got someone who's a bit of a... Well not a bit of a, but someone who's a nasty piece of crap and who assaults a woman badly. And that person enjoys the power they have over a woman in that way. As I said before, you as a woman, you have to forgive that person. Not for that person's sake. That person has already hurt you. And hurt you very, very badly. Take away the power they have to continue hurting you. By forgiving them, you're letting it go. You're not absolving them of their sin. You're letting it go. Say, so what happens if that person repents? What happens if that person gets a conviction of sin? They repent, they're forgiven by God, but you won't forgive them. Who's being hurt by what they did? You, not them. They've repented. It's only hurting you. Oh, come on. I've, I've given that as an example because that's the extreme. That's the extreme version, isn't it, really? Me talking about someone lending money or someone doing you know, bad, someone lying to you or anything like that. These are easy things to forgive, aren't they, really? It's not much of a challenge, is it? Talking about something, more, wow, massive incredibly bloody painful that's a tough one to forgive exactly the same as all the rest of you're still constantly looking back at what happened and what that person did to you therefore every time as I said before every time there's something on the radio or the TV of some of similar thing happening you go right back there and right back through it again you don't need to do that you don't need to do that. You've gone through enough. That's the reality. You've gone through enough. You've gone through way too much. Really, not enough, way too much. 
You need to forgive that person. See, understand it doesn't absolve them of their sin. It sets you free from what they did. That's important. Now moving on to the next subject. Same video, one video. Talked the other day about uh, loving your neighbours, uh, loving your enemy. Early one at the um, Spiny Palace, I opened the gate for the lady with the bike. Now that's showing kindness. That's showing consideration to a complete stranger. Now, that also, there's wisdom there. There is wisdom in that. The reason why there's wisdom in that, I wasn't doing it because suddenly I thought, oh, there's wisdom in this. I did it because, well, holy, she's on a bike. She's going to have to get off her bike to open the gate. Why don't I just open the gate for her? Yeah, that's why I did it. But there's wisdom in that. The reason why there's wisdom in that is because loving your enemy is really difficult. But showing some degree of love, kindness, consideration, grace, mercy, that sort of thing, to a complete stranger. You don't know whether that person is nice or nasty. They could be either. Right? Doesn't matter, they're a stranger to you. You don't know whether they're nice or nasty. But you're still showing kindness, love, really, to that person. Doing that makes it so much easier than to move on to the next step of loving your enemies. Because knowing you've loved these strangers, you know a lot of those people wouldn't have been very nice people. Yet you've been able to show love to them. So if you can do that, you can show love to someone who you know isn't that nice. Yeah? Work up to it. You know? <laughs> Start doing that with people who could be very nice people. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Because God loves those people. Whether they're not very nice or nice, the Lord died for them. Right? He went through everything he went through for them as well as for you. You weren't worthy, they're not worthy. Okay, they're in the same boat as you were. Right? Before you were saved. Same boat. If you're a Christian, then somebody made an effort with you, even though you were undeserving of that. Right? Most of us weren't the best friends of the people that made the effort. That's the reality. So, there you go, practice. Be nice, be decent to people who you know, are going to help you to learn to do that to other people. People may be less worthy. You don't understand. Worthiness has nothing to do with it at all. Nothing at all. You've got to start seeing people through God's eyes. Now, if you see people through God's eyes, you know, He loves these people. He knows that you know, they do what they do. He knows that, but He knew that you did what you did before you came to Him. He knows you still do what you do, even though you're with Him, right? Come on, none of us are perfect. We all still do things wrong, don't we? So these people, yeah, they're where they are. That's the reality. Whether that's your enemy or whether that's a stranger, they're where they are. You were blessed where you were, so, yeah. I've never had a heart for people before. I'm not saying I do now necessarily. Let me think. There are other people who have a far bigger heart towards people than I do, and towards, you know, than I will. You know? I'm not expecting, you know, me to be the most loving and compassionate person. Compassionate, I've got that. You know, empathy, I've got that. You know, I've been through stuff, so I know. 
you know, yeah. Yeah, I've hit rock bottom. I've experienced agony, so I know that when people are going through stuff, I know what that's like. Yeah? I can empathise. I can do that side of things, but I've not been the most patient of people in any way, shape or form with people. That's going to improve, I think, a bit, at least a bit. Certainly I've noticed even the last couple of days, you know, I've been driving. I've let people out, I've let people in a bit more and not got so annoyed when they've not noticed quickly. The other day I did, no, oh, <laughs> some people, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I basically come to a full stop waving this woman out and she's still sat there. Waved her out twice and I thought, right, I'm going, okay. <laughs> You're just going to sit there. Let me come in the other way, I can see, you can see. You just, what are you waiting for? Yeah, <laughs> when you're dealing with people like that, you, you don't know what's going, what's, no idea. Obviously something else is going through her head, she she wasn't really thinking about, oh, this person's letting me out, okay, I'll go. It didn't quite twig, so, yeah. Um, I'm a work in progress, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not there yet. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh. Well, I'll put it this way. Yeah, I'm now. Yeah, I know. I'm a far. I'm in a better position now than I was, even like three days ago, four days ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's cool. But one thing I will say about um, the renewal, that sort of thing. It's uh, similar to training, like if you're doing weight training, that sort of stuff, you know, like because I was doing chest before, I got up to 42k, I didn't do complete sets of 42k, I did two sets, but I got, I can shift that way. Um, but then I sort of didn't do any for a while, so I was back to starting to get at 30, but then I did some sets at home, I did the 33 to 35k, um, 30 of that, and the next day I did 30 of adding 2k to it. Well now, the muscles are like, ooh, ow, need to rest now, please. Okay, a bit tired, rest me for a day at least, please. That's going to be the case with you You are going to sometimes need rest. You are going to sometimes, yeah, you can't necessarily charge forward at 100 miles an hour. Sometimes you are going to have to stop because, yeah, the whole point of that shake, make, break thing, the whole point of the break, shake, break, make, that's, that's the way, not shake, make, break, um, is that the breaking point is, you know, digging out stuff from maybe years, stuff that you had deep inside. That stuff can be painful, that stuff can leave pain, and you may need a day or two to recover from that. Don't worry about it, you've got time. Right, you, yeah. If you know you've only got three days to live, then maybe you need to be in a hurry. But I imagine if God's doing this now, you've probably got more time. You've got plenty of time to recover. Right, so don't worry about it. That recovery time is important. Spend that time with the Lord. You know, spend it in praise and worship. You know, deal with your heart. Deal with you know, any of that pain still in there. Get rid of it. Let it go. Give it to God. You know? Time to recover, very important. Yeah, you, you're going to need that. Yeah, not everyone's going to need it, but yeah, certainly if if you've got this deep stuff, yeah, you're going to need time to recover sometimes. Just allow yourself that. Take care of yourself. Yeah, eat well, sleep well, rest well. Yeah, but find things to do that you enjoy as well. Yeah, laugh. Even though it, yeah. It may have seemed only a while ago that your whole world collapsed. Laugh. You know? Find things that you enjoy because, put it this way, that's going to do your soul so good. Because it was only a few days ago that your soul was like, oh no, everything's collapsed, I'm going to die. And now you're reminding your soul that, no, no, no. There's still joy. There's peace, there's joy, there's still happiness, there's still fun. 
And there's still pain, but there is still fun. Now this is life. Come on, soul. Get to grips. This is life. This is what life is all about. Now sometimes you're going to have pain. Sometimes you're going to have joy. Sometimes peace. Sometimes havoc. Get a grip with it, right? But have those times. Do the things that give you pleasure. Go and have a nice meal. The thing you enjoy the most, have that. Well, I bought the Merc out again. Um, <coughs> start the car, there's no ABS warning light at all. It's time. It's so weird. It really is. I think it's just some, you know, glitchy thing going on. I have no idea what it is. Weird. Very, very weird indeed. Um, quite likely, put the machine on, find out it's something like that. Or the fuse. Could be a loose fuse or wire loose that's causing the problem. Yeah. What I'm going to do with that car, because I've got the, um, I got the thing I got from Halfords, that dog guard thing. It's noisy, very blinking noisy. I'm going to take it out. The one that's in the Civic, I'm going to put into that car. The reason is, is because that car is, the Civic's noisy anyway. Like the Civic is quite a noisy car compared to the Mercedes. So the Mercedes is supposed to be a quiet car. So switch the things around. Put the netting in the, the Mercedes, put the other one in the other one. Yeah. Have a bit of peace and quiet in the Mercedes. Yeah. Hi. It's a good car, apart from the ABS. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. I should probably go out later. One thing I expect is that um, yeah, it'd be a lot easier to stay indoors. Yeah, after, in my understanding, it's all, Yeah, I'm starting to see what God is doing and why. I'm starting to understand that yeah, it's not going to be a situation that's dealt with overnight, but it won't be long. And then once that's done, let's see what God's going to do about the doggy situation. Right, you take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.